اللہ وسلم علی کا یا رسول اللہ اہل بیتک المعصومین المنتجبین یا لیتنا کنا ما کم سادتی فنفوز اگاگا فوزا نعظیم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللہین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا ان من ازواجکم و اولادکم عدو ولکم فاخذروہم وَإِن تَعْفُوهُ وَتَسْفَغُوا وَتَغْفِرُوهُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمِ إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَاهَا صَلَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمِ صلوات صلي على محمد For the love of Abba Abdullah Hussain, with the loudest of our voices, Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad. First of all, we thank Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us with today, uh, tonight's opportunity to commemorate the departure of the two sons of Hazrat Muslim bin Aqil, salawatullahi wa salamuhu ala. Salli ala Muhammad. Indeed, when you look at the life of these two sons, and of course the life of Muslim bin Aqil alayhi salatu was salam and his entire family, there are a lot of lessons that me and you can learn in order for us to be able to improve our lives, to get closer to Ahl al-Bayt, and to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You all know without a shadow of doubt, when you go back to Karbala, there are so many ideals that Abba Abdullah established in Karbala. One of the ideas, ideals of Karbala is that we see a proper way of brotherhood. How brother should behave towards another brother. And another ideal which we learn from Karbala is the relationship between the son and the parents. And how should the father and mother raise their parents and upbring their parents. So when we meet tonight to commemorate the life of Muslim bin Aqil or the life of the two sons of Muslim bin Aqil who were matired in Kufa, what we learn is that this is a sign and the verification of being a pious child and wall of the Saleh. So therefore tonight, inshallah, we're going to touch base on the importance and the significance of wall of the Saleh. How important it is to have a good and a pious child. We will look at the definition of a pious child because sometimes we make mistakes by defining a pious child in a wrong way. So we will look at the definition of a pious child from the Islamic point of view and from the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. And then we will look at the benefit of a pious child in the life of the parents, be it in this world or in hereafter. And how Amir al muminin explained about disobedient child. A child who does not respect the father, who does not respect the mother. Son who doesn't bother whatever words come out of his mouth towards his father and mother. He does not think twice. He just let the words flow from his or her mouth. Because these two boys that we are celebrating and commemorating their life, Muhammad and Abdullah, they represent pious children. And Muslim bin Aqil represent pious father and pious parents. So if we are to commemorate in a proper way, is to take lessons from the life of this great family. We all know Akil family is a very big family. 
It's a family full of spirituality. It's a family that is close to Allah and close to Ahl al-Bayt. Hence you find children who are very, very young were ready to give their lives for the sake of the Imam of their time. Children of their age were ready to worship Allah in the darkness of the prison of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Therefore, let us begin our discussion. You see, when you go to the teachings of Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, salawatullahi wa salamahu alayhi, Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen, in his teachings concerning or regarding a pious child, Walad al-Saleh. Because all of us sitting here, we are fathers and we are mothers. And if you are not fathers today, tomorrow, inshallah, will be fathers. And if you are not mothers today, tomorrow will be mothers. Some of us are grandparents, mothers and fathers. And you will see, inshallah, in our discourse of tonight, how serious and important it is in Islam to have a pious child. Amir al muminin alayhi salatu was salam, when he discusses Muhammad, when he discusses about a child who is disobedient, this is how Imam gave the takrir. And from that takrir, we depart and look at our discourse. Imam said, Al Walad al Aq ka isba is zaid in Turikat shanat wa in kutiat alamat. Look at this rewire. Imam alayhi salatu wa salam said, Disobedient child, a child who doesn't bother how he talks to his father. He doesn't bother how he interacts with his father. We see today, unfortunately, even among our societies, sons who chase away their parents from their houses. We see in our communities and our societies, sons who are not in talking terms with their parents. And when we talk to them, they say, no, Allah will judge us. Do you know the judgment of Allah? Do you know what will transpire in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the Mawlai Kainat said, Al-Waladu la'aq ka isba iza'idin. This obedient child is like additional finger. Imam said, what is additional finger? If you leave it without cutting it, it can become sometimes disgusting when you see it. And Imam said, if you cut it, it can be very painful. Imam said, this is how disobedient child is to the mother and the father. Number one, you cannot disown the child. And number two, you keep him in the house doing nothing. He brings a lot of stress and trauma to your life. Therefore, you realize that Walla the Sali, obedient child, because he said the children of Muslim and Aqil, why are we remembering them today? Because they were ayatullah. They were signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why are they signs of Allah? Because their father was a pious father. And their mother was a pious mother. They did not think twice to give their children in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in enlivening the affairs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore me and you left our homes to be here to remember these two sons of Muslim bin Aqil. Pious child Walad al-Saleh is regarded in Islam as a ni'matul qubra to father and mother. When you have a son who is pious, a son who obey the instructions of Allah, the instructions of Al Bayt, and the instructions of the parents so long as it's not against that of the Allah. He said it is the greatest ni'mah to the parents. And Allah made it very clear in Quran. Good children, we have our sons, we have our daughters. They are the beauties of this world. They are the ornamentals of this world. They are the flowers of this world. Allah said, Al-Malu wal-Banun zinatul hayatul dunya. Wal-Baqiyatul salihat khayrun inda rabbika thawaban wa khayrun amala. 
Allah in Quran said wealth which is in a lawful way and pious children son good son daughter good daughter they obey parents they obey elderly people they respect elderly people they don't talk to elderly people anyhow today you find some the way they address elderly people you said ya allah are we not lovers of al bayt so allah in quran is saying a pious child is zinatul hayat al dunya it is the beauty of this world so if you have a child who is pious allah regard that child who is beauty of this world when they are living in a community and they are living in a society their presence in that community and their presence in that society it is regarded as beautifying the community and society so on the contrary if you have sons and daughters who are disobedient who do not bother who do not respect their parents let alone respecting those of the age of their parents and by the way islam regard anyone of the age of your father and the age of your mother as your parent as your father as your mother yes we begin with biological fathers and mothers but whoever is of the age of your parents they are your parents whoever is of the age of your brother senior he is your brother whoever is of the age of your sister senior she is she is your sister so therefore quran made it very clear when the bad ones are in the community they made community to be dead community because they do not beautify that community therefore our beloved imam imam jafar sadiq salawatullah wa salamuhu alayh in the hadith reported from mawlai kanadi he said الولد الصالح خير معين لأبوي. A pious child is the best form of assistance to the father and mother. Then Imam said, في مرضهم in their sickness. You know when you have a child who is pious, the child that you have raised, the child that you have looked after. When you find yourself wanting or in a very difficult situation, Islam expects the child to give you the company before any other person. So therefore Imam Ali Salatu Wassalam said, "Hum khayru ma'in ala maradi." Yaani when the father is sick, the best companion is the son or the daughter. Not when I have a son and I have a daughter when i become sick i cannot even go out of my house i'm just in the bed i'm thinking of who in the community should come and help me when i have my pious child and my pious daughter so imam ali salatu wassalam is teaching me and you that when we talk of a walad saleh is the one who give the father company when the father is sick but hadith never stopped there wa fi amalih even in the work of the father in the work of the parents when the parents reach certain stage the children will come and take over imam jafar said that is the blessings of having a pious and a good child so therefore sometimes it's not a coincidence that you have your business and all of a sudden your son comes from university and he takes over we have a riwaya from al albayt that the best one to keep you and to give you that company is that obedient son and obedient daughter and imam said the best platform where in fact the role of a pious son and daughter manifests is during your last days of this world fi ayyam al akhira min min umri this how the wise said yani in the last days of your life you will need your pious child to remind you of allah and to remind you of ahlul bayt and to remind you of quran when you call the son the son ask you how high should i jump and come to you my father and my mother Therefore Rasulullah said khayru zadil li yawm al aqira aw yawm al qiyama walad al salih the best of all the provisions that me and you should prepare before we go to qiyama according to Rasulullah is to have a pious child 
There is no provision, wallahi, fathers and mothers, than to have a pious child, as the pious child can remove you from Jahannam in the life of Barzakh to Jannah. So easily, as we'll demonstrate later. So Rasulullah said, Khairu Zadin is the best of all provisions. Isn't it Quran said, Inna Khairu Zadi Taqwa? The best provision is Taqwa. They said, Wallah, when you have a pious child, and that child has that Taqwa, and the father is not all that strong, because of the piety and the Taqwa of the son or daughter, Allah will give you the Shafa on the day of Qiyamah. Therefore, Rasulullah, in a very famous riwayah we all know, he said, إِذَا مَاتَ بُنُ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثٍ صَدَقَةٌ جَارِيَةٌ أَوْ عِلْمٌ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ أَوْ وَلَدٌ صَالِهِ يَدْعُوا لَا So simple, Rasulullah made it clear. He said, whenever a person departs from this world, all your books are sealed and closed. Nothing will help you except one of the three. The first one, Rasulullah said, what? Sadaqatun jariya, running sadaqa. What is running sadaqa? You help in the building of the mosque. So long as people will continue to use the mosque, you'll get commission from Allah in your life of barzakh. People are in need of water. And you go out of your way, suffering all the pain. You help them to get borehole or whatever means of water. So long as they will keep on using the water, you will get the shafa and the forgiveness of Allah in your life of barzakh. You build a hospital for community use. And people are coming in and out of the hospital just for help. And you just do it for the pleasure of Allah. When you die, that will help you in your life of barzakh. And second, uh, the second one is our ilm on yontafobeh. Knowledge Allah bless you with and you teach people. When you leave this world and they continue to use that knowledge, Allah will give you the shafa on the day of qiyamah. The third one Rasulullah said, Awwaladun salih yad'ula. Or you leave behind obedient son. You leave behind obedient daughter. It was not easy for me to remember my father. It's not a joker. Sometimes you can see some of us who have lost our parents. Sometimes we hardly remember them. Only when the one year comes, we remember. Or some don't even remember. Only when somebody dies and they go to the cemetery in pa uh, Park Road or Kariako, that's the time before they go to the burial of the new Mayet, they are now looking for the grave of the father and mother to give to Amolana Yallah one fatia here, inshallah. Rasulullah said, Awaladun salih yad'ula. Or you leave a pious child, and that child remembers you and make dua. Therefore, there was a riwayah reported from our beloved Prophet during the time of Isa. Ala nabiyina wa alihi wa sallam. They said one day Isa visited cemetery. When he visited the cemetery, Kabristan, he was passing by different graves one after the other. He got to one grave and he realized the no prophets of Allah, Allah teach them, Allah show them. Isa realized that this person in this particular grave was receiving the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isa stayed there and he left. After some time, some riwayah said after one year, some riwayah said after a few months, Isa came back to visit the grave. And he realized that this particular grave, which was receiving punishment, today the person is receiving happiness and blessings of Allah, and the whole grave is full of light and nur in the grave. Now, Isa, being the prophet of Allah, raised up his hand and asked Allah, Ya Allah, there was a time when I visited this particular grave. I realized this person was receiving punishment, but today I am here, and he is receiving your mercy and benediction. What is the secret? Allah revealed unto Isa. He said to Isa, this man did, do, did not do anything. He left behind a son. And that son, when the father died, he was young. Now the son is a grown-up son. He is a helping orphans in his community and society. And he is talking to people in a good way, in a nice way. Because of that work of the son, Allah has lifted the punishment from the father. So therefore, to have a pious son is an investment. We need to invest, not just money. We need to invest spirituality and knowledge 
in our children so that they can become the best form of provision for us when we depart from this world. Look at this old man. He was receiving punishment from Allah. But because the son now is doing charity and the son is talking to people because Rasulullah mentioned kalimatu tayyiba sadaqa. Good and kind word is charity and sadaqa. So Rasulullah said this man, he was just giving good words. Charity in his words. Charity in his approach. And because of that approach, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala give him jannah. Therefore, somebody came to Imam al-Ridha, salawatullahi wa salamahu alayhi. Salli ala Muhammad. He asked Imam al-Ridha, what is the relationship of a walad al-sali, pious child to the parents? Imam al-Ridha said, فَإِنَّهُ مَفْخَرَةُ لِوَالِدَيْهِ that pious child is the pride of the parents. In other words, there is nothing that you can be proud of compared to having a pious child. When you have an obedient child like Muhammad and Abdullah, the children of Muslim, or like Hamida, the daughter of Muslims, you should sleep well. You should be grateful to Allah. You should prolong your sajida. Because Imam said, Mafakharatul liwalide, this pious obedient son or obedient daughter, they are the pride of the parents. And there is no doubt, every parent, when their children are good, they become so much happy and content. And Imam alayhi salatu was salam continued describing the relationship between pious child and the father or the mother. Imam continued to say. وَيَمَوْرِدِ أَعْتِزَازُ وَرِفَ أَبَيْنَ النَّاسِ Allah Akbar. He said, this pious child, when you take him in a public, in a community, in a gathering, that pious child elevate your status in the midst of people. And now I've got my son, who is a grown-up son, and we are in a meeting. Or we are in the mosque. Grown up son, I'm not talking about young children. Young children, no problem, I'm assume. And then he talks to a friend of mine who is of my age. How do you feel in a bad way? How do you feel? He said, Mauri Dorifa Abain and Nas. This pious child, he elevates your status in, amongst people. Because the way he or she will conduct himself or herself. And the way the child will talk, not when your son becomes disrespectful, you become happy for it. That is a nekma, that is azab. When your child becomes disrespectful, you should be worried about it. You should be able to ask yourself, what is wrong? What is going wrong here? What needs to be done? Because in Islamic society, you know in each and every society, you will want to see respect between the young and the old. Young and the old are not the same in the eye of Allah. There must be respect. There must be honor. The old ones must be honored. They must be respected. They must be cherished because you need their experience. And the young ones must be sympathized with because you need them for certain things. So therefore, they become maurid the refa'a. They become a status for you. Your position gets elevated in the eye of people and in the eye of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, somebody came to Mawlai Kainat. And ask Mawlai Kainat, what do you normally ask Allah in your life? Imam asked him, what question are you talking about? Then he said to Imam, I want to know what did you ask Allah and what do you ask Allah? Look at the response of Amir al muminin Imam said, Wallah, I never ask Allah to give me a handsome child. And I never ask Allah to give me a child of good looking, husnul qama. Then what the Imam said, Bal sa'altullah an yarzukani awladan muti'ina lillah wajilina minhu wa idha nazartu ilayhim karrata ayni. Subhanallah. These are like the children of Muslim bin Akilah. Imam Amir al muminin said, I've never asked Allah to bless me with a handsome child. Of course, everybody said, I need a handsome child. No problem, it's good, it's not Arab. But Amir al muminin said, I've never asked Allah to give me a handsome child or beautiful daughter. And I've never asked Allah to give me a child who is well structured. No. But I ask Allah to grant me children 
who are obedient to Allah and who succumb totally to the command of Allah so that whenever I look at their faces, I find tranquility and happiness in my heart. Therefore, all prophets of Allah, Zakaria, Ibrahim, Rabbi Habli min as salihin Allah bless me of salihin of the pious child, of obedient children. Don't bless me with any child. Give me pious, obedient. The same way if a pious child occupies a prominent position in the eye of Allah, disobedient also, takes you away from Allah. Therefore, Imam Amir al said, Al-Walad al-Tali arrul li waliday. He said, a bad and disobedient child is a aib to his parents. Aib is a flaw to his parents. When you have a child who does not respect, by the way, no matter how your age, you are still son. No matter how your age, you are still daughter. Because there are some people when they reach certain status, they think they and their parents, they are of the same level. Islam, no matter how, even if you are 80 years and your parents are still alive, you are still son and you are still daughter. So therefore, Imam Amin said, it's a arun li Therefore, when you look at the verse of Quran, we quote it. Chapter Taghabun, verse 14. Allah said, Ya ayyuhal amanu, inna min azwajikum, وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ أَدُوًّا لَكُمْ فَاخْذَرُوكُمْ وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَسْفَغُوا وَتَكْفِرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّيْمِ Quran 62 Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said Oh you who believe addressing believing men and believing women you shall know that your wives and your sons can become enemies to you <laughs> now when you read interpretations and commentaries how do they become enemies to you? They become enemies when they disobey Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They become enemies when they stay away from Allah. They become enemies when they do not listen to you. And I know for sure as a parent, if your son or daughter don't listen to you, you cry sometimes. Sometimes you do not know what to do. So therefore Allah in Quran is saying, they can be your enemies if they become disobedient. If they do not respect you, they are enemies in the eye of Almighty Allah. Therefore, Allah said, Fakhzaruhum, be careful and be worried about it. But Allah said, Wa in ta'fu wa tasfahu wa takfiru, fa inna Allah ghafuru rahim. If you pardon and you forgive and you don't have a problem, of course you'll find Allah oft forgiving, oft merciful. Because sometimes you have parents, they say, No, I disown you. May la'ana be on you. That's not a good thing to do as a parent. Huh? No matter how rotten, excuse my word, your son may be, you cannot disown your child, as I mentioned in the Rewire of Maulai Kainat. Bad child is like additional finger. You leave it there, it is disgusting. And you, chuck, you cut it off from the hand, it is painful, Imam Amir al mentioned. So here the Rewire is trying to tell me and you, you cannot disown them and you cannot fold your arms and relax and keep quiet. I've got my children they are rich, they've got everything. No problem. Because somebody came and asked one of our beloved Imam. That, but I've got my children, they made life. They've got everything. Imam said, how many times we saw people who are doctors, who are engineers, who have occupied a higher position and they are disrespectful to their parents. Therefore, Rasulullah mentioned, Min Of the success of a person is to have walad salih good child. Like the children of Muslim bin Akhil, if you have that and you have nothing on the face of the universe, wallah, go to sajida, prolong it and be grateful to Allah. Because that child will grant you the shafa which you can never think of. Therefore, ulama came forward and said, bad child can have two impact on the life of the parents. Islam said, khusran, lost. And there are two types of lost here. Khusran ma'nawi and khusran mati. Spiritual lost and material lost or physical. And scholars said spiritual lost is worse than the material one. If a child doesn't obey the parents, he becomes disobedient. The spiritual loss 
which the father and the mother may face is that when they die, the child may not remember them in the other hours for them to get the shafa of Allah. Therefore, even Islam said, if you have a son or a daughter who gives Islamic knowledge, give lectures, teach people for the sake of Allah, not only father and mother, even grandfathers will get the shafa of Allah. Even grandfathers. Why do I say even the ancestors? Because you are doing the work of Ahl al -Bayt. So that is ma'anawi, that's the benefit spiritually you can get. But now if the son is not obedient child, then the chances of you getting the du'as are slim. You'll only rely on the du'as of the mu'mineen or maybe the du'as of malaika or rahma and of course the abundant and infinite mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Rasulullah mentioned there is no obstacle between the du'a of the son to his father or mother and the acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The moment you make that du'a, it is kumfa yakun Allah answer. So therefore the spiritual loss is that you may not get that. You have to do certain extra work for you to get that mercy of Almighty Allah. Therefore, Imam alayhi salatu was salam, in discussing this, our Sif Imam, he said, أَشَدُّ الْمَصَائِبِ لِشَخْصٍ سُوءُ قُلْكِ إِبْنَيْ He said, the worst fitna that may happen to a person is to discover one of his children are having bad akhlaq and bad behavior. He said, that is the worst musibah that can be falling a person in his whole life. And of course, the material one is easy, which Quran mentioned. Sometimes if a child is not a good child, and you put him even in your business and whatever you do, you may not get what you want. How many children, due to their behavior and characters, their parents run at loss for many times? But sometimes, fathers and mothers, you will do your homework properly. But still, you will find the child is disrespectful. It happens sometimes. Sometimes you will work very hard. Giving the child the proper time. Giving him Islamic values. But still the child is not the way you want. He has called and said, do not despair. It may be imtihan from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as you see, it happened also in the history. Look at Muawiyah, the son of Yazid, not the father. Muawiyah, the son of Yazid, he was raised in a very bad house. But he ended up becoming the lover and the follower of Ahl al-Bayt. And he died as a lover and a true follower of Ahl al-Bayt. So there were sometimes you may see, my child, yes, you may not be happy completely, but do not despair. You cannot disown the child. You have to keep the child. Make dua. Look for solutions. Make tawassul. Ask Allah to help you so that the child can become a very good child. The same thing another example, you find Musa alayhi salatu was salam. Ala nabiyina wa alihi wa salam. Musa was raised in the good part of his life in the house of Fir'aun and Asiya. Yes, Asiya was a pious lady, but Fir'aun wasn't a good person. He claimed uluhiya, he claims to be Allah. But look at how Allah made Musa to become his ayah on the face of the universe. So therefore sometimes if you find my children are not behaving well, do not despair, just do your homework. And the same thing, another example, look at the child of Nuh alayhi salatu was salam. Prophet of Allah, yes, the wife was not good. The wife was fitna. Allah made an example. Darab Allahu masala lil ladhina kafaru mara'ata nuhin wa mara'ata lutin. Kanata tahta abdayin min ibadina salihay. Fakhanata huma. Allah gave an example of two ladies. The wife of Noah and the wife of Lut. They were under pious servant of ours. But they deceived and betrayed those pious servants. And we told them to enter fire as they are abode with the residents of fire. So therefore, sometimes you may do your work. You will give proper upbringing. You will lead your son by an example. Or you will lead your daughter by an example, as we mentioned. If you want your son to become a good son, words of mouth sometimes doesn't help. Your action should speak louder than your words. If you want your children to be namazi children, 
Let them see you praying and making namaz. If you want your children to be charity people, they want to give charity, let them see you doing charity. If you want your children to be humble and love Quran, let them see you reciting Quran. If you want your children to love Al al Bayt, let them see you loving Al al Bayt. Teach them by your actions and not by your words of mouth. Because today, the reality of our lives today is that. We are teaching our children something and we are doing something else. Therefore, we find a lot of clashes in our systems. We need to do our homework and leave the rest in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you do that, you will see Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala will help you. Therefore, when we meet tonight, we are remembering these two beautiful children and sons who were very young like our sons who are sitting here. But at that age, they knew what was shahada. At that age, they knew what was love for the imam of my time. At that age, which is less than 10, according to most of the riwayats, they knew what was salat. At that age, Muslim wouldn't tell them to go and perform salat. They would go and perform their salat. At that age, Muslim would never tell them, go and recite Quran. They would go and recite Quran. At that age, they were okay leaving their mother and joining Abba Abdullah al -Husay. These are the type of children we want our children to emulate. So therefore, when you look at the whole institution of al Bayt, we have role models for each and every class of people. For the young, for the old, for the rich, for the poor, for the learned, for those less learned. We have role models in all the institutions of Al al Bayt. And last but not least, let's try as much as we can, as parents, as fathers and mothers, to have a good relationship with our fathers and to have a good relationship with our mothers. No matter what the situation, do not get tired of your mother and your father. In whatever circumstance, because that moment might be the moment of triggering your entry into Jahannam if you don't take care. Give them the maximum respect they deserve. If they are wrong to you, forgive them. Allah will forgive you and your children will do the same thing to you. You know, there's a Hekayah which our scholars widely report. There was this old man, he and his wife. Allah blessed them with two sons. They raised their sons well, like the way our parents tried to raise us. And the sons reached a certain level, matured enough, doing everything. Alhamdulillah. So the elder son took over the authority in the house. Looking after the parents, fending for them, providing everything. Today, even some of times to give our parents pocket money sometimes become a hell of problem. Which is the greatest blessings in the eye of Allah. Simple things can get you Jannah and closeness to Allah. And Karbala demonstrated that without a shadow of doubt. Imam Hassan al Mushtaba had seven children in Karbala. Abdullah assumed that leadership and how he spoke to his children. Therefore, scholars said, when you look at Yusuf, Allah gave him a Yaqub, 12 children. But now the issue is not about the, qual the quantity, it's the quality. Look at the relationship between Abu Abdullah and Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. And look at Ali al-Akbar and Imam Zain al-Abidin in Karbala. Look at Muhammad and Aun of Sayyidah Zainab. Huh? They were together. Most of them will, were killed and martyred at the same time. He said, brother will tell the brother, come. And the mother will tell them, go. And the father will say, go. The same thing applied to Muhammad and Abdullah, the children of Muslim bin Aqil. This is the type of brotherhood we want to see in our communities and societies. Whereby there is a rapport between the father, mother, and the children. And there is a rapport between the brothers and the sisters. And this is what Islam is all about. When Islam, when people say charity begins at home, this is how it goes and flourishes in the community and society. But if you do not do that, you don't expect more mercy of Almighty Allah. 
So you try as much as you can. So this old man, now the elderly, he's helping. He looked after them properly until they died. One of them died, the mother. So when one of them died, this elderly person had to move from one city to another. So he left the young one. When he left the young one, the young one started looking after the father. This is a very good lesson for me and you. He looked after the father, he looked after the father until he got tired. You know, sometimes sabr is not a joke. When Allah said, I am with those who are patient. Allah cannot just be with you like that. You have to do something to deserve the presence of Allah and the company of Allah. He got tired. When he got tired, this is what today we ulama they term it asylum. That time there was a different terminology. He took the father to a very far place where he would send the food to the father and he would live his life. And today we have, unfortunately, as Imam Jafar mentioned, he said one of the signs of Akhir Zaman is that when you see a son raising up his voice above that of his mother and father, that is the sign of Akhir Zaman. This is Imam Jafar. And Imam Shabbat said, when you see a son praying that the father should die or the daughter so that they will be free, it could be for inheritance, it could be you no, know, they are tired of the services they are giving. Imam said, that is the sign of Akhir Zaman. And the reality today, we see it in our all communities. Now this one got tired, he sent the father somewhere. Until the father died, he got the news, he went, he did what he was supposed to do with Ummah, fine. Wallah, the same thing happened to him when he became old with his son. This Hekaya Ulema mentioned in most of the books. He became old. The son started looking after him and the son got exhausted and tired. Then he told him, I want to take you far away. Then he asked him, why? My son, you are my beloved son. He said, no, you told me you did the same thing to your father and the same thing. And exactly that's what he did to his father. Therefore, Islam said, Kama to dini to dan. Wa kama dazra taqsad. The way you plant, you will reap it. What you do, you will get it. So therefore, let us respect our fathers, brothers and sisters. Let us respect our mothers. Let us have a good relationship with them. One dua of this is blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they recite one fatiha for you, that fatiha can move mountains. Especially when that fatiha is from the heart, which is clean and open for you. You will get the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't it we are told a son could not say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah when he was dying during Saqarat. And Rasulullah asked, why can't he say la ilaha illallah? Rasul himself went to this young man. He said, say la ilaha illallah. Young man could not say la ilaha illallah. Everybody was so dumbfounded. Rasul himself is here. You are dying. Rahmatan lil alameen. You cannot say la ilaha illallah. What is the problem? Rasulullah looked around and asked them, are his parents alive? He said, yes, the mom is alive, but the dad is in barzakh. Said, can you call the mom? They brought the mother. Rasulullah asked her, do you have a problem with your son? She kept quiet. You know women, Hanun. She kept quiet. Rasulullah said, do you have a problem? She said, yes, for the past six years we are not in talking terms. Rasulullah said, this is the reason why the tongue is stuck. Cannot say la ilaha illallah. Are you ready to forgive him? He said, I will forgive him only because of you, Rasulullah. The moment she said, I've forgiven him, the son said, La ilaha illallah, and immediately he departed from this world. So now you can see your du'as as sons can work and the du'as of parents can work. So the more you have good relationship, the better chance we stand in the eye of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tonight we are gathering to remember these beautiful sons of Muslim bin Aqil. And we all know Muslim bin Aqil was the first ambassador and the safir of Aba Abdullah al When we begin our majalis of Karbala, the first person we remember is to remember this great personality, Muslim bin Aqil, salawatullahi wa salamahu who accepted the invitation and the da'wah of Aba Abdullah to go to Kufa and Karbala and to assess the situation and come and inform Aba Abdullah whether to come to Karbala or not to come to Karbala. 
Muslim did not only give himself to Islam and to the Imam of his time. His children also gave their lives to Abu Abdullah al Hussein. And they gave their lives to the Imam of their time. And they gave their lives to Islam. That is why narration says on the 10th day of Muharram, we all know this person would come and ask for permission from Abba Abdullah. Abba Abdullah would grant permission. This one would come. Abba Abdullah would grant permission. Huh? Among those children who did not die on the 10th day of Muharram were these two beautiful sons of Muslim bin Aqil who are in the holy city of Kufa today. When Allah bless us with the ziyara of Abba Abdullah, we get the opportunity to go and visit these two great personalities. Narration says after the battle of Karbala, these two children were taken to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Narration says when they were taken to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, the aim and intention was to molest these two sons. Imagine the sons like these children were sitting in front of me. Sons of nine years, some said sons of eight years, some said sons of seven years. You can imagine in that heat of Karbala, no father, no mother, these children were taken to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Narration says when they arrived in the palace of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, Ubaidullah called his prison guard. One narration says he called one of the cruel people. And then when he called him, he said, Take these children inside the prison. But I give you a brace commander. When you take them inside the prison, do not give them food. Do not give them water. Harass them and harass them and harass them until they are exhausted, until they are tired. One narration says, uh, the children of Muslim bin Akil, uh, every day in prison they would fast uh, to seek nearness to Allah, and then at night they would break their fast. Uh, you know what was their iftar and futuria for the fast? Uh, narration says, uh, every night before they break their fast, uh, the prison guard would come uh, with two pieces of barley bread uh, and one jar of water for these two sons of Muslim bin Akila. Isn't it narration says uh, the father died before the arrival of Abba Abdullah al -Husay. There was no one to console Muslim bin Akil and the sons of Muslim bin Akil. The daughter of course Hamida we know she was with Abba Abdullah al -Husayn. When they took Muslim on top of the palace <laughs> After they fought Muslim, and now they were ready to throw Muslim from the top of palace to the ground in Kufa. Muslim looked at them and said, I have three requests. My first request is that I owe someone money. Please pay the money after my departure. Number two, Muslim said, I want you to give me Islamic burial when you kill me. Number three, I want you to inform my master, Abba Abdullah. <laughs> Ibn Ziyad responded to Muslim, Hey, Wallah, your, for, your first wish is granted. We will pay whatever you owe, but the second and the third wish will never be granted. Hussein will come and meet his death here with us. <laughs> Therefore, narration says, when they threw Muslim from the top of the palace, Muslim said, Wa alayka salam ya Abba Abdullah. Now Muslim fell down. Abba Abdullah bin Ma'asum, who knew what was happening. The moment Muslim fell down, obtaining that shahada, Abba Abdullah looked at the direction of Kufa and he said, Wa alayka salam ya Muslim ibn Akil. <laughs> now remember Muhammad and Abdullah, they were alone in Kufa, in the prison of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, and the father died before the arrival of Abba Abdullah. I want you to picture the scenario, the father was alone on the street of Kufa, yaltafitu yaminan wa shimala. Turning left and right, huh? nobody was there to help Muslim bin Akil. 
And here comes the shahada of Muslim to Aba Abdullah. Aba Abdullah look and said, Wa alayka salam ya Muslim ibn Akil. Narration says he called the daughter Hamida. He said, Oh Hamida, know that my sons are your brothers. Oh Hamida, know that my daughters are your sisters. Narration says, Aba Abdullah started patting on the shoulder of Hamida. You know what Hamida asked Aba Abdullah? Oh, my uncle who said, Is my father dead? <laughs> is my father gone? Abu Abdullah, look at Amida and said, Oh, Amida, why are you asking such question? She said, Because we are taught uh, when someone elderly petting on your shoulder, it means you are an orphan. <laughs> Hey Allah, the young daughter of Aba Abdullah Sakina came to Hamida. She came and hugged Hamida. Hamida, I will be there for you. We said, who was there for Sukaina when they started slapping the cheek of Sukaina? <laughs> and they said, oh Hamida, are you orphan? Report said, oh Sukaina, you will know the meaning of orphan when Shemur slap your cheek on the temple of Mar. Now these two sons of Muslim also found themselves alone in Kufa. They were in prison. Punishment upon punishment until one year came according to some rewire. After one year they sat next to one another and discussed. Let us talk to this prison warder that we are the children of Rasulullah. Maybe he will release us and go. Of course when he came old man. They asked him, do you know Rasulullah? He said, yes. Do you know Jafar ibn Abdul Muttalib? He said, yes. Do you know Ali ibn Abi Talib? The old man said, yes. Then he said, do you know Muslim ibn Akil? He said, yes, Shahid Kufa, I know Muslim ibn Akil. Then he said, we are the sons of Muslim ibn Akil. To cut long story short, he gave them the way and he asked them walk during the night and find a place to stay during the day so that these people may not be able to trace you. What exactly happened to Muslim happened to the two sons? Isn't it Muslim was walking in the street of Kufa and he found himself in the front of the house of Tawah, that lady. And her son, of course, Bilal had to broke the news. The same thing, these two sons found themselves in the house of a lady. Not knowing that the son-in-law of the lady by the name Falih will break the news to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Now, of course, the lady tried as much as she could to protect the sons. But this Fali came and took them. He tied them up. He took them to the shore of the water of Euphrates. When he took them, of course, he tried many people to kill and they refused. His servant slave and his son, they refused. After he tied them, he took them to the water of Euphrates. There was a dialogue, painful dialogue. The two sons said to him, Please do not kill us. Go and sell us in the market of Kufa. Let someone buy us. <laughs> and they said to him also, if you don't want to do that, then take us to Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. We will talk to Ubaidullah ourselves. <laughs> but he refused, he refused. Huh? <laughs> he then severed the head of the elderly one. <laughs> but when he severed the head, he chopped off the head. You know what he did? They put the body into a bag and they tied the bag and they threw the bag into the river. And the body kept on floating on the river. Last but not least, of course, the young one now took the blood of the elderly one. And he started smearing the whole part of his body with that blood. And he said, oh, my brother Muhammad, I will soon join you. But I want to join you with your blood on my body. <laughs> he then had to chop off the head of the young one. <laughs> and he also placed the body into a bag. And he tied off the bag and he threw the bag on the river. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un.
وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون